So, life has no meaning. Absolutely everything, even this very moment in time that you're in. Yes, you think it's got meaning, but it hasn't. What are you talking about, Cluffy? Let me explain, and then I'll also go through a process of how you can change the negative meanings that we give to life, those frustrations, that anxiety, that fear, how we can change that. The old imposter syndrome, OCD, all that stuff. It's all good here. Have a listen after this, because I, I think you'll find it's important to you. Hey, this is the Personal Development Unplugged podcast, where we use hypnosis. Yeah, hypnosis. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't worry what it is. It's just a mass of processes that we're going to get you to change. Change to let go of anxiety, low self-esteem, and create massive, massive supreme inner confidence. But that's confidence in your competence and competence in your confidence, which means you can do anything and be, well, be safe to enjoy. Enjoy the world as it should be with you at the helm, creating the life that you want. That's what this podcast is about. You and being the best you you could be, singing from your real voice, aligned with your mission, aligned with your passions. That's what it's about. So if you're interested in letting go of anxiety, if you're interested in letting go of fear, guilt, all those blooming syndromes, imposter syndromes, and every little bit of the mind which is negative, then have a listen here because we've got some wonderful processes and lots of good conversations with between you and me to get us both thinking in such wonderful ways. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Just take the trance to have a, have a listen. This is Personal Development Unplugged with Paul Clough. In simplicity, there is genius. In simplicity, there is genius. Hey, you. Well, the fact I'm going to talk to you about is the fact that life itself has no meaning whatsoever. Absolutely no meaning. Yes, really, really, really. Yes, really. How'd you get to that, Cluffy? I can hear you say, you, you may even switch off, but don't switch off yet. Not, well, don't switch off to the end, obviously. You see, things just happen. And if you're in those things, and we all are, Right now, you're in a thing. I'm in a thing. And those things that we're in have no meaning whatsoever. No meaning at all. Until. Dun, 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 dun. You make meaning. You give it meaning. And we all do that differently. And we all give Maybe sometimes a slightly different meaning. And some we can give really different meanings to. And yet it's the same bit of bloody life. You could be in the same thing. The same bit of life that's happening right now. And you will make a different meaning to the person standing right beside you. And they are in that same experience. I mean, this is what really gets me. Is you get those extreme adrenaline, adrenaline I can't even say it, extreme. Adrenaline. Adrenaline. You know what I mean anyway. Those junkies. They're jumping off things. They're balancing on a little bit of nothing. Way up high. They're doing all sorts of things. And for them, it's a massive adrenaline rush and they love it. For me, no frigging way. I get terrified just looking at a video. I don't know other people too. They can they can see that video or see a picture and they, they get the shakes or they get sweaty hands. But to them, the meaning of that is all excitement. I'll give you a silly little one now. A silly little one. I give meaning to some food. Well, we all do, don't we? But if you just say the word, would you like some liver, Paul? I will I even get it now. Can you hear my voice? 
It's like ready to throw up. Yet other people love it. Oh, give me some lovely liver tripe. But it's liver. Now, why do I give that meaning? And it really is an extreme reaction and meaning. And I know where I got it from. It's connected to my past. If you can think of this little old Cluffy, little old Paul. I never used to go to school dinners because I lived really close to the school. So I used to go home, come back in the afternoon. And one day, mum and dad said, ah, we're out for the day, so you have to go to the school dinners. Now, that's a little bit traumatic anyway, all that stuff. And guess what was on the menu? <sighs> Bloody liver. I didn't like liver then. And do you know what they did? They made me eat it. And because I wouldn't eat it to start off with, they said, right, everyone can go. But Clough... You're going to sit at that dinner table until you finish it. And they made me eat it. That's the only thing what people did make. They really made me eat it. And since then, I've given that meaning. If you think of, you know, Man's Search for Meaning, the book, it's what that man, he just gave all the issues that he was troubling or being troubled by, and they were massive, gave it a different meaning. Because he knew people could not control that, that, that meaning that he would give it. But it's, it can be quite difficult, can't it? You see, every experience we go through in the now is filtered. How do you mean, Cluffy? Well, in NLP, there's a thing called the communication model. And basically, it says, or it means, that you take in this event, you're in the event that right now, and you take it in through your senses. Your five plus, plus a few more senses if you want, but you see it, you hear it, you feel it, you smell it, and you taste it. But as it goes in through those senses... Our unconscious mind has to try to make sense of this bloody thing because there's so much information vying for your attention and it has to filter it down. So it will delete a few things out of the way which don't make sense. It will distort some things to make sense and it also generalise things just so we can get a handle on it. We can see it for what it is. It sounds about right. But it's also, with those three filters, also filtered with other things our attitudes, our beliefs, and our values. And it's a horrible thing that I know racial prejudice exists. Well, of course they do, Cluffy, but it's so horrible. But you think, people with that attitude, beliefs, and values, how they completely code their experience and give meaning to, to anything outside, which would be so different to you or I. You see, no people, no two people experience the same event the same because we all have different experiences, different beliefs, different values, because those beliefs and values are based, I guess, on our experiences. Our attitudes are created through our experiences of the past, all the learnings that we've come up with, and they become our filters. You see, and as you filter everything that comes in, we get this little picture in our mind, our internal representation. That's linked to our state, the way we feel, and that's linked to our ph physiology, the way we move. And when we, when we code all this in and we give meaning to this thing that's happening around us through that internal picture, internal representation, also we've got that little internal voice of ours giving it all that jip. We get an emotion, a physiology, and we create a behavior. And sometimes... It could be that wonderful excitement, love. And it could be, on the other side, other side, frigging fear, anxiety. There. And you see, this is what can happen. And sometimes the meaning we give causes us to feel anxious. Confusion, maybe. Fear. Old imposter syndrome. And I don't belong here. Well, you're giving everything else that meaning and taking it on and creating a picture in your mind, that, that state, that emotion, getting that physiology and creating a behaviour. Maybe OCD, 
depression, well, you fill in the blank. All of those are created by the meaning that we give to this one event. Isn't that amazing? We even, and this is a bit what really puzzles me, and it, it puzzled me so much because I, I actually suffered from it very briefly for a few days, of being anxious about something that hadn't already happened. I didn't even know if it was going to happen. I thought it might. And my unconscious mind with a lovely protection mechanism said, do you know what? Let's go through every worst scenario. So I was actually giving meanings and all negative because each one of those worst that could happen scenarios, and there wasn't just one, there was loads of them, gave me fear, gave me anxiety. It confused the hell out of me. I didn't feel good. And I was now giving meaning to stuff that I even not, I wasn't in the event. Yes, I appreciate my unconscious mind was trying to protect me, but protect me from frigging... Gee, I'm using that word too much, aren't I, frigging? Just trying not to swear. Bear with me. I'll swear in a minute, probably. But the thing is, does that mean we can't change those filters because of our experiences? Yes. No, no it's not yes, it, it means we can't. Yes, we can. Because we can look to the things in our past that have created those beliefs, those attitudes, those values, and change and learn from them. Because if we learn from them, we, won't, we will change the filter. And if we change any one of those blooming things in our head, that internal representation, we change that, it will change the way we feel. We change the side, our physiology and change our behaviour. If we just change our emotion in a moment, it will change the picture in our head, change the voice in our head. Our physiology would change. If we just change our physiology, it would change our state. It would change that voice and internal representation. You know, if you remember way, way back in an FMQ, it is something like, uh, I can't remember what it said now. It's something, wear a cape. So something like, no, get rid of anxiety, wear a cape. If you can find that, just put wear a cape in the search bar and it will come up. And it's just changing our psychology in a weird way. But hey, but the thing is, yes, it can be changed. If it's something big and you're, you are coding or giving meaning to things that are really giving you not just a little bit of anxiety, worry, but big anxiety, panic attacks, maybe it's giving you real fear. That imposter syndrome is just too much to deal with yourself. OCD is getting on your bloody nerves and you, you just can't seem to change it. Here's a little tip for OCD. If you're doing something, say, 10 times, stop and do it 50 times. What? How is that going to stop it? Because then you'll realise how bloody stupid it is. But you really got to do it. You've got to do it every time, 50 times. You'll get bored as anything. If it's depression, and that's really getting to you, not just a little bit of sadness, but getting to you, my advice is please go and seek one-to-one. One-to-one, not... I'm not going to say not counselling, because counselling does help for some people. But really, I believe in a good hypnotherapist. Someone with master PRAC NLP skills and master PRAC timeline therapy skills. You get someone who's got those set of skills. Man, you, you it, they'll help you really quickly. And they'll help you learn from those previous experiences which are changing those filters of meaning. And they'll make a big difference really, really quickly. But even so... If things are happening, what I'm going to go through, just a, it's only a little one, and, and there's, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more. But just today, these things will help you. And so if anything is just annoying you, like that bloody thing that was anno annoying me, those few days that I was thinking and getting more and more anxious, I changed things. And the one I found that really helped me, and you could do this, I changed the picture in my mind. How do you do that, Cluffy? Well, it's really easy because we've all got that picture. And it comes up. You start thinking about, you know, what's going to happen. This might happen. I'm going to do this. And you've got that voice going on. And it's like a movie screen, but you're, nearly, you're in that movie. So you step out of it and see it over there. And you float above it because I can float. Because it's in my imagination, by the way. No one controls it now. 
So I could float up above it and look at that blooming thing and go, is that really going to happen? Yeah, I don't think so from over here. Because from over here, you're dissociated. Therefore, that emotion has now been cut off. You're seeing it like a, from a director's point of view of a movie. And you go, do you know what? Let's just change that. Now, how can you change it? Run it backwards if you wanted to. Just run those movies backwards. Have the sound go, all backwards. And then if it comes back, run it backwards again. Each time, keep running it backward, faster and faster and faster. In the end, you'll distort that picture so much that it won't affect you anymore. Now, especially if this is just a what? Just a little annoying thing. Remember, this is just annoying. Something that just keeps repeating in your mind. You go, well, actually, you know, it's not doing me any good and I can deal with it. So that's like getting a meta view. What else can you do with that picture in your mind? Well, I did this as well and it, it was really effective. I just got that picture and I just pushed it further and further away from me. And the further away it went, the darker it got. Because the smaller it got. And the smaller it got, the darker it got. And the further away it got smaller, and the smaller it got, the darker it got. And then, poof, it disappeared. And as soon as I got that distance, two things happened. One is, the emotion disappeared. Because again, I'm dissociated because I'm pushing it away. But also, it was like by pushing it out of my sight, I could see clearly. And then I could say, well, how would I like things to happen? Let's see a successful, a successful thing happen instead. How would I like it to be? Even if you just say, it doesn't happen. So there's that. So you can play around with all that. I'll give you a very quick, I, a quick thing I did with a guy a long time ago. And he had, it was sort of a driving phobia, but it was also a height phobia. Scared of heights. And the two came together. And the thing is, he used to have to try drive over this bloody great big bridge over the River Thames in London to go to meetings. And he couldn't do it. He said, I just could not drive over that bridge. And it does look quite big. But he said, I just couldn't do it. So if I was going to a meeting in London, I'd have to get someone to drive me. And I, I tried not to explain it, but he said, I had to explain it because what I also had to do was get them to stop before we got to the bridge. I would then go into the back seat of the car and cover myself with a blankie. It wasn't a blanket, a blanket. <laughs> and he said, and then I'd get my, my friend to drive us over the bridge, go through the, um, the toll booths, because it was like a toll bridge the other side. And then I would pull over, get out, and I'd drive, do the rest of the drive. He said, you know, two things. It's, it's costing us two of us people, and it's so embarrassing. And it also meant that I could never do it myself. And I also want to go on holidays where I, you know, I want to go into the countryside and there's bridges in countryside, there's viaducts, and those places are absolutely beautiful. And all I get is to see them on a picture. And when I see the picture, I get that nervous feeling. See, we're now giving that picture a meaning. And that's just totally, God, that's totally weird, isn't it? It's inappropriate. That's not looking after you and saving you. That's a totally inappropriate reaction, which is what we've got to change, change our unconscious mind for, to say, you know, I know you want to save me, but that is a conflict. You're actually giving me more fear than the actual bloody thing itself. So what did we do? I got him to imagine. Instead of driving with his friend, he was driving by himself. And I said, it's just your imagination. So, you know, it's not happening. It's not real. I just want you to imagine you're going to drive over that that bridge. But here's the thing, just as you begin to come round the corner before it's in sight, I want you to imagine floating out of that car and leaving yourself driving that car safely. And I want you to drive drive and float beside that car. Look at yourself driving that car comfortably, safely, and even with a smile on your face. And I said, as you drive up, just float a little way ahead of yourself so you can look back at the wind the front windscreen and see yourself smiling, driving safely. And then I want you to go way ahead of yourself. Go to those, those toll booths as if you're sitting on a toll booth because no one else can see you because it's imagination and see yourself coming down off that bridge, getting ready to pay and have fun throwing your coins into that basket because that's bloody difficult, isn't it? And see the smile on your face, even laughing as you just try to throw, get that bloody pound piece into that basket. 
We did it a few times. Sometimes we judded the picture just to break things up a little bit. And that was it. We got the unconscious mind to, to realise that the conflict, you know, the fear was actually, as I say, totally inappropriate. It wasn't protecting me. In fact, it was more dangerous because if he was to drive with that fear, he would be a danger to himself and others. And as soon as the unconscious mind knew that and learned that, we just like erased that filtering mechanism. And he's fine. And the last time I had a chat with his secretary, she said, well, he's not here at the moment because he's on, on a walking holiday up the hills and the mountains. She said, it's amazing, Paul, because she knew about it because he used to make his appointments. So that's the other one. So you can just change your feeling of a state, by the way. So if you change the feeling or the state you're in, so you've got fear at the moment. So what we've got to do is, oh, I said fear, but say we've got fear, but it could be depression, it could be, you know, frustration, so it could be sadness, it could be a little bit of guilt, little things, remember? You just have to think, well, what would be a better state? What would be a better emotion to have that would be more appropriate and keep me even more comfortable and more safe? Because this negative feelings are not doing it for me. So you might just go to being comfortable. And when you just think of a time in the past when you were really comfortable, Oh, I've got it now. And as you get that feeling, automatically then begin to think of the thing that was giving you a little bit of concern. And you'll notice that feeling. You're, you're in a different feeling. You're in a different state. So you're not in the state of the problem, therefore, because you can't solve the problem if you're in the same state. So we get another state. And if you even, if you think about that one, and there's a great process I did way back in my very, 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 very first podcast called number two, because the first one was introduction. And that's all about feeling comfortable, which is a lovely process that just gets rid of panic attacks, fear, panic, all of that. And that's even in the hypnosis tracks, by the way. So you go there, it's paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast, sign up. And then when you go to that, you get your link, you go to that link, and if you wanted that one, you'd go all the way down to the bottom. 2.1, you'd see feeling comfortable. A lovely thing to do. And that would help you change your state as well, to realise what comfortable is for you. And as I said, you know, we can go, and I've remembered the number now, it's FMQ79. Change your emotions, wear a cape. And that's changing your physio physiology. So just remember, it's a little bit like Superman. Apparently I can't play that very much because in Russia, they don't like that. Who knows? But here's the thing, change the picture in your mind, as I said, it will change the way you feel, the way you move, and your behaviour. Change the feeling and state, it will change the pictures in your mind, your physiology, and your behaviour. Change your physiology, it will change your feelings, the pictures in your mind, the voice in your head, and your behaviour. And if you wanted to, you could put them all together, so you could change the pictures in your mind while changing your feeling. And change your physiology all in one go. Wow. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? You know, making a picture or a video in your mind how you'd like it to be. Add the feelings of emotions of how it would be. And see yourself with that physiology, the way you'd move. And then you go into that, that you over there with all that going on. Get it all in one go. And as you notice everything then come back into your body, obviously, and then start acting as if. We've talked about this so many times. You act as if you would be without that issue. You would act as if the way you want to be. And even just acting as if, it changes everything. And those magic words, this or something better, telling your unconscious mind, come on, this is, a, this is the bar, the minimum. Everything else has got to get better. And you can just play around with it. So let's just recap a little bit. We, we give the meaning to everything. And only you give that meaning. So if you give that meaning, it means you, you're in control of that, that meaning. So it's not one you like. It's not one that is, is a benefit to you, making your life better. Then change the bloody thing. 
learn from it. So if you know, like me with, with liver, even though I still don't like the bloody thing, I can look at it now because <laughs> so, I've worked on myself on liver. But there are other stuff that I know, like this picture I did and push it away. It works so easily. And it just means you, basically, you've got to set your intention. And your intention is that what is happening at the moment, I acknowledge it, but it's not, it's not helping me. It is not positive. It's not making my life better. Therefore, I have the intention to change it. And I think as soon as you make that and you say to your unconscious mind, well, have a little learn what's happening, but this is how I want it to be. Notice how much better it is when I do this. And for those little things, it become a habit. And when it becomes a habit, you won't have to do it again. There you go. Isn't it fun just to play around with these things? As I say, only for little things, annoying frustration, you know, things like that. But if you have big stuff, go for one-to-one. -one. Go, I say that, go, and, go and see a therapist. I'm a therapist, but not your therapist. So please go and find somebody and they'll help you immensely because that's what we're here for changing the lives or helping you change your own life. You do the change work. No one else can make you change. Just like this, you just set your intention. I'm going to bloody change this. Have the will to do whatever it takes. Because you can. You will. I know you can. Because whatever you think you are, you're more than that. We always say that. So there you go. I hope that was immensely enjoyable and immensely valuable to you. <laughs> I hope you found a golden nugget in that. Even if you just play with it and notice how, how well it works. Get used to doing it, playing with little things, and it, it just changes things. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about going to a meeting. Okay, let's just push it away. Let's get a meta view of how I want that meeting to be. What feeling of state would I rather have? How would I, how would I physically move? And then act as if. Boom. You've got it. And then you build upon it each time. And they're only little steps, and they're, but they're little steps with massive increments. Huge difference. Then when you see something that is really good and give it really good meaning, to remember it, to feel good. So you're telling your unconscious mind, not this, but this, the good stuff. There you go. Please do share. Share what you learn, if you would. Please share the episode or the whole of the Personal Development Unplugged uh, podcast because it, it will make a difference. It makes a difference to the people listening and make a difference to them. And the more popular we get, we're only a little, only a little uh, podcast, but the more popular we get, more people will get the benefit of all of this. And that will just be you. You making a change in the world by just sharing what you, what you know and you experience. So give it a good meaning. If you see that subscribe button on the thing you listen to now, just press that now. Then you'll get every one of these. There's normally one on a Wednesday, an FMQ, and a longer podcast on a Saturday. But they're there for you. They're downloadable and all that stuff. So have fun. and join that, that uh, free hypnosis stuff. It's always good. It's all free. There's 60 bloody tracks there. So there's got to be something for you. More than something. Loads of stuff for you. So with that... I'm going to make meaning of having a nice cup of coffee and seeing the beauty of the world while I just sit in the garden and go, ah, what good meanings can I make of this today? <laughs> have more fun than you can stand, my friend, and have more passion in every moment of every heartbeat. Okay, time to fly. See you next time. Bye. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.